Melanie Kovacs, uh, and she is Professor of Drawing at Bath Spa and the uh, UCMA Drawing Program Leader at Wimbledon College of Art. And her um, presentation is Communities of Practice in Drawing. And let me open this up. Slide, yeah. Yes. So Thank you. You can, if you want to walk around, you can use the clicker with those buttons, or okay. you can just use those, or you might not. You don't need to use them if you stay still. <laughs> See, I'm a bit, I've been amazed at how I feel like I'm being supplied with a curriculum of drawing <laughs> today, which I know is going to be incredibly useful. Because I, I know it's not necessarily the way, the way I think, or even the way I teach, I don't think. Um, and I know I have, um, a, as an artist who's also an educator, which I'm assuming there are a lot, lot of people in the room in that, in that position, I've been lucky enough to uh, spend a lot of time thinking about drawing and thinking about the drawings of others. One of those periods actually happened at UWE, where I was the Henry Moore um, drawing fellow that was housed by Yui in the acid days mm -hmm. um, uh, where you know drawings have a long long history in this building and I had a two year period here where I was uh, doing my concentration on my own drawing and as a sculptor a particular kind of interest in kind of making drawings rather than drawing drawings and also just spent a lot of time looking at the drawings of others because I was invited by Black Dove Black Dog <coughs> Publishing to make a draw book on drawing, you know, come up with an idea uh, to make a book on drawing. Um, so I made the drawing book, which was my kind of journey through drawing, where I found it. And it, I certainly didn't see drawing as something that belonged to artists. I thought, thought it was very important um, to, to have a very kind of cro cross-disciplinary approach to where I might find drawing. And I found it in many different Places. And this has informed how uh, uh, I've made other drawing publications, Drawing Water, which was another kind of uh, collection of drawings around uh, how the sea appears in visual culture. But this might be the drawings of engineers, marine biologists, um, explorers, cartographers, uh, someone on an expedition, as well as uh, uh, an artist trying to represent uh, their relationship with the sea. So um, that's in, in uh, kind of uh, framing my approach to how I have tried to communicate what I think about drawing. Um, am I going to press this one? Is this right or this one? Either, it doesn't matter. Either. Okay. <coughs> um, I was course leader um, at the MA Drawing in Wimbledon, which is a course that's now sort of relocated and reconfigured to Camberwell. Um, this was, uh, cross, again, embracing this cross-disciplinary approach. We had students uh, that were from the gaming, video gaming, that were illustrators, that were uh, designers, uh, many different kind of ways into drawing. Uh, but what they needed was a research proposal for their MA. So yes, they, could, they did arrive with a portfolio of some sorts, but more, more important that they uh, applied for that course with a question, and a question that had drawing at its heart. Whether or not it was to go off and investigate the uh, uh, language of choreography and how that's visualized in drawing, or whether or not it was to go and work out what dream imagery is in drawing, or whatever it was, it was that was their question. So there was, there was a curriculum, uh, there was a course structure, but essentially it was driven by the students. And I, I find that drawing is open enough, slippery enough, ever expanding enough as a conversation to what is a drawing, that it can accommodate so many different kind of um, routes of investigation, of research, of practice. And it was very important to that course that we built a community of practice um, that kind of had its home in, in the course, but then could kind of expand out to include various other kind of networks and conversations. That those students were connected 
to other conversations about drawing. They had their own really dynamic internal one, and then they had to kind of find tentacles out into, into the world and that conversation around drawing. I, I will add this was partly economically driven because the only uh, teaching they got was from me and from I was allowed to employ someone to assess them. That was the only other kind of teaching hours that were attributed to the course. So it meant we had to be quite agile in terms of how we access other kind of learning. So as well as learning from each other, we was a course in London, so we could use all sorts of resources and drawing collections, which again, I think are really important to, part, to, to how we kind of work with curriculums and developing drawing, is we access the drawings that are there. Don't forget all the drawings that already exist. They're in plan chests, in collections. How do we access them? Um, one, of, one of the great uh, resources uh, was the Bridget Riley Foundation Fund at the British Museum that encourages students to go and directly draw from drawings of the past. And I think drawings, I mean, we've talked a lot about this today, how drawings connect, one drawing connects to another. So drawings move quite fluidly in time. We can look at drawings that, that were made hundreds or thousands of years ago and find our way into them. Um, so that, that, was very, that was a very useful kind of resource of the course. And there was a lot of kind of consideration of drawing and something. So what's the purpose of drawings? What are drawings for? How do drawings exist in the world? So it was things like, oh, what is drawing and archaeology? What is drawing and dance? What is drawing and photography? That and was really important. It was about drawing connecting to other things. I'm not reading out what's on the screen, but I, I, I did write some notes. This is my attempt at being sort of systematic. Um, one of the kind of roots for the drawing MA was uh, the history uh, associated with Wimbledon and the Centre for Drawing, which has already been mentioned, which had many iterations and many fantastic figureheads, um, Angela Kingston, Anita Taylor, um, but anyway, there are many people associated with this, and I was uh, lucky enough to apply for some funding to make a kind of digital archive of the Centre for Drawing, because annoyingly it was a bit pre-Google. And, and you'll probably find anything that was a bit pre-Google sort of just disappear. <laughs> so there was, a, there was an attempt to kind of make an archive um, of the Centre of Drawing and, and its activities. Unfortunately, that's not live currently just to do with kind of various shifts in the university and the fact that it's kind of, it's no longer got its centre in Wimbledon in that historical framework. So um, it's got a bit caught up with that. Um, but there, it, it was a really important kind of focal point for shifting the conversation, building the conversation around drawing, uh, as well as kind of accepting, uh, you know, th this, this conversation doesn't have an edge. There is a radicalism to the space that drawing can occupy. It is the choice of activists quite often to work with drawing. It is the choice of feminists to, to employ drawing. It, it is the choice of, uh, you know, difficult conceptual work often ends up taking place in drawing. Um, so I, I really value how it can kind of um, contain and build that radicalism into the art school. We had a programme of events, again, kind of run on a shoestring, but uh, it was called Draw, where we, we tried to make it as non-hierarchical as possible and also really tried to celebrate the drawing practice um, of members of staff at the university. Because um, I, I talk about communities of practice, um, and uh, it's very easy with the pressure that we're all under as educators to feel like our practice is something that we squeeze into a few weeks in the summer or something like that. But it, um, through Draw, um, it, it was an opportunity to invite people uh, within, within my community of practice to actually talk about their practice with students. And, and open up about what they did. 
Um, and th this was a really valuable kind of exchange that did help um, kind of build a conversation, build this idea of this community that had this shared interest. Obviously, sometimes I could bring externals in as well. We had a number of kind of much kind of grander events. This, this symposium called The Resilience of Drawing um, was really interesting talking about, you know, in our post-digital age, why we're still drawing, you know, how come it isn't redundant and looking at kind of uh, drawing and education and ver various different things, as well as inviting artists like Rachel Wright, to talk about her drawing practice and just share quite intimately why, do, why does she still draw and what does she get from her drawing practice. Um, again, with no budget, I run a residency programme in the Centre for Drawing, which basically offered the space to a number of different practitioners in the Easter holiday. So the students had to clear out the space and make it kind of pristine. Someone came in for a few weeks and had that time to draw. Uh, if they needed help, students would help them, uh, and then they would make a presentation at the end. And various, some, some of whom are in the room, but, um, people that did this. So uh, I suppose I asked myself, what did I think in preparation? What is a community of practice? Uh, I certainly feel I'm in one today. Um, you know, not not just because I might recognise a few of you, but just kind of how many times we're saying things that I think we understand in each other and in our approaches to what drawing might be um, within an educational um, context, within a creative context, within a personal context. So it's a shared interest in the subject. Um, for me, a community of practice should be non-judgmental and generous. That's something I, I would put at the heart of it. Uh, something ideally that's non-hierarchical, inclusive, staff and students, uh, alumni. Just because someone's left art school and they're no longer paying you anymore, it doesn't mean they're not part of your community of practice. I think it's really important to, to maintain good alumni relationships. Really important it's cross-disciplinary, cross whether that's the business school, medical school, where, wherever, wherever you find someone with that interest, they should be welcomed into your community of practice, should be hospitable. I think food's a really good thing to include. <laughs> um, uh, and reach out beyond the university. For lots of people, drawing is their point of entry to a whole kind of creative journey. Whether we're talking about our, our youngest or we're talking to people that didn't, didn't have access to education at earlier points in their lives. So people that might return to education. Our, our mature students were a really important contributor to the MA drawing. I mean, partly it was a, a part-time course, so it allowed people to have other responsibilities, whether that was to do with work or caring or whatever. But um, the peer learning that, that became kind of that part of the kind of richness of the course was a lot to do with uh, drawing being attractive to a mature student, um, not exclusively, but it, it's a great way in. Uh, similarly with the kind of summer school models or introductory things, things to do in the first week of term with students, often drawing is just a great kind of point of entry for them. Um, <coughs> Yeah, because uh, the economics, I've talked about it a little bit. If you, if you run it as a community of practice and within this kind of democratic model, you might find you can afford to do things that you can't afford to do if you have to apply for funding. So that economic thing is important. Also, students can afford to draw. You know, most students can afford a pencil and a piece of paper. Most people can afford a pencil and a piece of paper. So, you know, in terms of the economies of scale, so much art production, uh, drawing is also very attractive for that reason. Uh, if you're a network, you can connect to other networks nationally and internationally and utilise other kind of collections and resources. And uh, communities of practice sustain practice. You know, when we send these, these people out into the world, you know, if they're connected in some way to a uh, some sort of network that understands what they might be trying to do, they can. It makes it more easy to keep doing it. And I suppose the thing I would have found again and again: if you make a space for something, something will happen in that space. So even if you're not quite sure 
what your community of practice might look like or what it might be. You know, if you if you get it, if you start it, things will start to happen in it. Um, I thought I would just really quickly whiz through the drawings that are on my desktop at the moment for my practice because I think again it's it's. Um, important to understand as educators where you come from in your own practice. So I did a very brief drawing uh, fellowship. This, this is kind of stuff from the last year, uh, or year and a half. Uh, brief drawing fellowship at the University of Exeter for their Global Systems Institute because I wanted to find a drawing of what uh, cli the climate crisis looked like. Do we have the equivalent of Darwin's Tree of Life for our current climate crisis. This is a drawing by um, Professor Tim Lenton of a, a, of a kind of feedback loop, which may end up being a very kind of iconic bit of visual culture for us. I draw books. Um, so these are books I'm drawing at the moment. Uh, Rachel Carson's To See Around Us. Um, I make drawings onto things as well, so working with ceramics. This is a... Um, uh, Drink, public drinking water fountain that I made last summer, so working with kind of um, glazes and tiles and a ceramicist in Glasgow. Um, I draw stories, I try and combine my writing with drawing, I find various forms to do this. This is uh, a newspaper form that I've been working with, this is one I made this summer based around the River Tweed telling the story of the river as a kind of border and boundary between two countries. Um, so mixing in personal narrative, an interesting kind of uh, uh, particular kind of song that's associated with the border, the border ballad. These are proposal drawings. I'm working on a proposal um, for a work for St Martin's in the Fields, a uh, church in uh, Trafalgar Square. Uh, again, where these are the... Uh, sketches and drawings for uh, a ceramic work called Spine that will go into the wall that had to reference the Richter tapestry that's hanging over the altar in some way. Uh, so these are the sort of drawings I make to try and explore that. I suppose I'm including this just to say my drawing practice is, is really wide. There's not like, I don't have a particular handwriting <laughs> for drawing and my drawings do jobs for me. Um, so this, these are the drawings that help me then make the proposal for the chapel. Um, this is a drawing uh, of a foundation that I'm working on at the moment for a public sculpture in Cambridge at the Science Institute there at Babraham. So you know, this is a whole other order of drawing that I have to work with someone else that can do this sort of drawing, but I have to be able to communicate what I want to do. Um, so these are the drawings I make and then I have to work with someone until they start to look like this. Um, but, you know, I have to put myself through these drawing processes. This is a kind of sketch for a drawing that will be in, in Farringdon that will be the biggest drawing I've made. It's going to end up like four metres high and onto a building and it's about, I think it's about 20 metres long. Um, this is a, a, a drawing that I made when I was in New Zealand in February. It was there as part of a drawing ecology group that comes out of Wellington Art School in New Zealand, where again it was fantastic to just sort of find out how they're um, culturally thinking about drawing, drawing as a tool of ecological thinking. Uh, we were relocated to a piece of Maori land um, in, in the south of the South Island. Um, where we were using drawing to kind of look at various kind of environmental uh, crisis issues about that particular bit of land. And I've also started delivering programmes outside of the art school, um, where I've been able to explore something I've been thinking about for a long time, but never found a space um, to uh, deliver uh, within the art school context, which is looking at the relationship between drawing and meditation. I'm working with a, a long-time colleague of mine uh, to deliver these uh, drawing programs that uh, look at uh, drawing as a kind of tool for life. Uh, so not, not necessarily um, about trying uh, a skill-orientated drawing uh, program at all, but it's looking at that relationship between uh, drawing and practice and what a drawing practice can do 
to uh, enrich your um, well-being and sense of self and place in the world. These, those are called um, drawing, drawing breath. Uh, which has meant I, I try and draw lungs quite a lot because of the meditation and drawing I've been doing. So these are a couple of drawings. Um, I was able to uh, play around with that a little bit at the drawing room uh, in London this summer. It's a couple of people that were on that programme are here today. So again, an amazing resource for students. Their library is extraordinary. Make sure if you have students interested in drawing, you send them up to that library, as well as their programme, obviously. Uh, but working on the summer school there, we did a drawing ecology workshop, so particularly looking at kind of ecological issues in relation to plants, which comes out of my own kind of uh, personal value systems and practice. Um, I was part of a show this summer that asked artists to make drawings in response to drawings of the past in this particular quest, uh, collection something you were talking about from the Swindon Museum that you did with students. Um, I selected the Elizabeth Frink Running Man and I made this drawing uh, called Dancing Woman to go with the Running Man. Uh, not the sort of drawing I would normally show, but for some reason I just thought I was going to do it anyway. I think doing the drawing um, and meditation workshops has made me much more public about my private drawings, so that's an interesting thing for me as a change. Uh, and I just curated a show that finished last weekend in Athens called Urban Ecologies and was able to curate in a number of artist educators who draw into this exhibition um, from one in New Zealand, one in Los Angeles. Um, the, the, I, I was uh, presenting work on uh, atlases, sea stain works. But again, thinking about a whole other network now in Athens, this group of kind of uh, students and ex-students that put on this um, quite kind of project orientated uh, show but thinking about oh another network another little node uh, to develop and um, see how that feeds into this wider idea of community of practice so um, yeah slightly less possibly much less useful much less of a kind of strategy than a lot a lot of um, people have been able to present today. But I, I suppose I, I want to kind of just come back to the idea that I feel like I'm, all, I'm sitting in the room with a community of practice and, and just not having, uh, just wanting to have that kind of more fully acknowledged and how significant that is. Whatever happens after today, whether we get a manifesto, a publication, or a this, that, and the other, it's, all, it's already here, um, you know, and it's part of a, uh, a community of practice that has been active for really a long time, for many decades now, within education, within art practice. So, um, you know, however new and exciting this is, it's also a con con I want to say the it's continuous. It's, it's continuing. It's a continuum, <laughs> even. Thank you. Um, yeah.